Thank you for watching, and remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your support. And today is a really good coffee day. It does, it does indeed. <laughs> yes, Any, I will anything be to searching warm up. out all the coffee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Take notes. Send us, send us some recommendations for when we wind up there. All right. Well, we are talking about. Uh, thank you, Felicia. Uh, so, when we talk about the southeast, what's going on right now? There's several different things that we're watching. It's not just the flooding. It's also the rain and the wind and the temperatures. Absolutely. It is just raw. It is not a nice day. What they were talking about with that onshore push of wind moving the water in. You do not want to drive through that. That salt water eats up the bottom of your car. The rain that we've seen is adding to the water that's on the ground, but some of it's salt water and it will corrode the bottom of your car. All those metal pieces will be effectively be eaten away. And then you have to try to get out of that flooding while it's cold and windy. Yeah. And it's just all in all a situation that you don't want to find yourself in. The tow Bottom trucks line. don't even want to play. No, they, they don't, don't. They don't put those big chains in the salt water because they don't want to lose the chain to the corrosive action of the salt. So you're stuck pushing it out, then you're wet. You're cold, you're tired. So bottom line, just don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't find yourself in that situation. We've seen some really strong wind gusts over yeah. the past 24 hours, uh, some even approaching 60 miles per hour at times. This is all thanks to that big low pressure system that's just hugging the Florida coast right now. We've seen so much rain with that wind, and we continue to see that low slowly making its way up the coast, filling in even more areas with rain. Well, we still have more to come on weekend recharge that happens throughout the year, and it can happen about six to eight times per year, and it occurs when the orbits of the Earth, Sun, and the Moon align, and it can cause some minor flooding, but then you add in all the rain that we're seeing on top of our king tides this cycle, and that's why we're seeing some really difficult flooding problems right now. This is where the water rise is happening. Uh, Spring Made Pier up towards Myrtle Beach, getting close to about three feet, and that's going to cause some problems. Charleston, close to two feet right now. Trident Pier, Cape Canaveral area, about two and a half. And so we're just going to continue to see this rise as we approach high tide for many of these areas. That's why there's a coastal flood warning in effect for a significant portion of the coast from Charleston all the way down through Port St. Lucie. Uh, that's where we're seeing some significant flooding that will be ongoing as we go throughout the morning. Coming down, though, once we get into that low tide uh, in the afternoon. So our forecast crest for Savannah, Georgia, that's just over 10 and a half feet. Feet. Right now, that water is continuing to rise. We've seen that number go up and up, but with that forecast crest uh, around 10 and a half feet, this is what we can expect. So, you, you know, you get the different levels of tide and different things that happen, but we're talking about major coastal flooding, and that could even cause uh, areas like Tybee Island to be inaccessible. If you're familiar with the area, you know just a little bit of flooding, and that road to Tybee Island is just completely flooded out. That's what we're looking at today. Over the next five days, we will see a uh, continue to see some of these rivers, these river gauges in the major flood stage. We all know, Mark, that once it floods, it takes time for these streams and creeks and rivers to come back down. Absolutely. Weather at they. all. In fact, it's going to stay pretty cold, pretty gloomy, pretty windy throughout pretty much the entire day in Jacksonville, and we're going to just struggle to make it into the 50s when all is said and done, maybe about an inch, potentially two inches of rain, and this is not where the heavy rain fell yesterday. Thank goodness. You look at this down towards Miami, Fort Myers, uh, up into the Tampa area, even Daytona Beach. That's where you saw the really big rainfall amounts yesterday, but still some coastal flooding ongoing for areas on the Atlantic side. This is where the heavy rain is today, right over Jacksonville, but uh, this is good news uh, in the fact that our low pressure system just off the coast, and that's where the heaviest rain and the lightning is, and that's where I do expect it to stay throughout the day, just off the coast. That should help limit a little bit of the rainfall amounts, but here we go. It's just going to be a soggy, raw day in areas like Jacksonville. Jacksonville, stretching up into the coastal part of Georgia, even up into Charleston and portions of uh, the North and South Carolina border. So we have seen some really strong winds and in fact, some winds close to 60 miles per hour in spots. And it, this is all thanks to that low pressure system. Uh, it's really just cranking up the winds in some of these coastal areas, especially when it comes off the ocean. You don't have a lot of friction and that just allows the wind speeds to be really strong as they come on shore. Some really heavy uh, rain moving through Myrtle Beach right now. It's just not a great golf day. It's not a great day to be outside. This is one of those days that really you go inside and you kind of take care of those chores that you've been putting off all week long because really you're going to be stuck inside pretty much throughout the day. This is about around the lunchtime hour. Jacksonville, Savannah, Charleston still seeing that heavy rain. You can see how it kind of just lingers in the same spots all throughout the day. Even by 6 p.m. We're still looking at rain, but this starts to slowly, slowly taper off through the overnight hours, bringing in some heavier rain as we get into the overnight for areas like North Carolina. We are concerned 
concerned about the flash flooding, not only because of the rain, but also because of the king tides. And for more on that, we want to go live to Meteorology. Away, but first, your seven-day stretch. A little bit of a topsy-turvy powder. for this weekend where it's warmer in places like Denver and Fargo than it is in Atlanta and portions of the southeast. That's all thanks to a coastal low causing some flooding issues in uh, South Carolina up into North Carolina. That will continue for our Sunday. A little bit warmer in the southeast on Sunday, but we've got several coastal systems making their way into the Pacific Northwest, bringing an unsettled pattern to places like Seattle. That will continue as we head into the upcoming week, getting a little bit cooler in the central part of the country as we start off our Monday and that will continue. Temperatures will continue to fall uh, for the middle part of the country up into the Dakotas. And then here comes the rain and our next system sweeping through, bringing some rain and potentially even a rain snow mix to places like Minneapolis and up into the Twin Cities. That rain continues to make some progress to the east, bringing in uh, rain to Chicago. That will stretch into Friday and look at those temperatures in Chicago. That is a cold, wet rain uh, and potentially some snowflakes mixing in as well in portions of the Great Lakes. A little bit chilly in portions of New York and down into Atlanta with the rain moving back in. High of 60.